All right, come along, little ones. So far, I don't sense any food, but hopefully we'll stumble upon something pretty soon because I'm sure that all of you are going to get hungry sooner than I care to admit. And I know that there were some bunnies just right over there, excellent. All right, so I accidentally scared the bunnies, but I'll go pursue them in just a moment. Yes, that's what we're going to eat. That's what we're going to eat you for. As long as you're quiet and you allow me to do the very essential hunting when the time comes. But hello everyone and welcome back to Shelter 2, where we are here with our four little lynx cubs and we are going to do our best to try to be part of the wild cycle of life by keeping them alive long enough. Aha! Alright, keeping them alive long enough to be able to become part of the wild world. And there's a good bunny. Go, 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 go. I just saw a pretty flower too. Come on. I need this bunny. I need this bunny. Ah, there we go. All right. And look at them. And our babies are right behind us. Figuring out how to sprint just like little lynxes need to do in order to go ahead. Come on, everyone. Dig in. Mom kind of needs some of this one. But you guys can have some of it as well. There we go. I think one of the babies, unfortunately, didn't manage to get any food. So we're gonna need to make sure that he manages to eat soon. Ah, good, there's more bunnies. All right, come on this, this way, this way, guys. Oh, and there's several flowers here. So let's gather up some of the flowers and teach our children about the mysteries and the secrets of the wild woods while also sprinting after Dinner! Come on, come on, come on. Ah, there. Excellent. All right, where are you four? One, two, three, four. Oh, look at all of them! And come eat, come eat. All right, mouse right to eat. Yes. You guys can all eat right now. Because I think a couple of you didn't get enough food last time. And I don't want any of you getting weak with hunger. And I don't want myself getting weak with hunger either. So actually... Alright, come on. Really gonna need to look out on this rabbit. Come on, come on, come on. Oh, it's a clever one. Dang it. I used up a lot of energy and ended up losing that rabbit, unfortunately. Ah, come along, you four. I really need to remember to take good care of the mother or else the cubs will not be able to have the food that they need because we'll be too weak to be able to help ourselves. However, we did find another flower which will allow them to learn a little bit more about the secrets of the world. All right, I hear, I hear bunnies. Oh, the little cubs are so small. I'm so worried about them. Ah, there. Oh, there's a rabbit. Okay. I really... Oh, there it is, there it is! Oh, I don't know about catching up with this one. Yeah, I think it's way too far. I need to be careful not to exhaust ourselves. Alright, Mama. Oh, dear. And she's very exhausted. I wonder if she can go ahead... Oh, look at everybody! Good, she can lay down and get her energy back. Good, I was worried we could only get it back from pursuing our prey, in which case we were going to be in big trouble. But I bet we also need to rest because our little ones are not exactly <laughs> super strong. Hi, look at how beautiful the fields are that they get to grow up in. I really wanna go find more flowers so that they can learn more about the wildlife. Yes, the wild world that you all are part of. Aha! And there is a bunny. We'll want to crouch and sneak up on it a little bit more carefully. Right there. And... Get ready for... Ah, there we go. Phew! Okay, I was really worried for a second there, but I think we're okay. And it does seem we have two stronger cubs and two weaker cubs. I'm noticing that over and over again. 
and you four mom needs to eat but i'll get you more bunnies in just a second because i see several right over here but i do think that that is interesting that we can actually see the difference in the size of the cubs and if you notice two of them keep coming up for food more than the others and that is very normal oh they're getting so hungry all right come on don't lose sight got it excellent and that is very normal for what it takes to be able to raise little babies. Often in wild families, you'll end up with two, two members who are, or like some of the young will be very strong and some of the young will be a little bit weaker. And that's actually one of the reasons that some bird populations try to hatch their eggs on the same day. Because if you end up hatching your eggs on different days, then your nestlings inside of your nest you'll end up with a couple who are so strong that they'll just take all of the food and they can actually push and dominate uh, over their little nest siblings. And they'll end up thriving and then the younger nest sibling who hatched just a day or two after the other bird will end up passing away or dying because they can't compete with their stronger sibling. And so a lot of bird species, and here's a rock little ones, learn some from it learn the smell and the sense of the wild but you'll have many bird species that will actually roost on their eggs and incubate them so that they will be ready to hatch in a very special fashion so that hopefully the eggs will hatch as close to one another as possible come on go 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 there's so many bunnies yes all right and let's see which cub is smaller i think this one this one like over here these two are the the smaller ones in groups like this we'll have to be very conscious about the smaller ones let's gather up that skull and teach them more about the ways of the bunnies and the wild oh it's so pretty here let's look for some of the flowers i hope we can find them there's something shining over here a stick Huh. Maybe I should have named one of you guys Jay. Hmm? Oh, and here's another rock! I love it. I love that we're able to find these pieces as ways to teach them. This is the wild world that you were born into, little ones. Ah, there's something right behind us. Got it. All right, which one of you is my smallest one? I think it's actually this little guy right here. There we go. Aha, another little mole, excellent. No, this one's for mom. You all have had quite a bit and I need a little more energy. Okay, let's see what else we can find. The moles, the lynxes. Last time I talked to you guys a little bit about how lynx and rabbit populations are very intertwined and that is indeed part of their ecosystem the canadian lynx population can actually be watched to ebb and grow and collapse oh no come on come on there oh geez oh geez one two three four How do I protect my babies from that? Holy cow. Um, there's something where the populations could definitely go down. Are you all okay? That's why we need to feed all of you and help you get stronger. Oh my gosh, and now they're eating the eagle. Cycle of life. Oh, geez. Okay, that was a little alarming, uh, to say the least. I think, I wonder if we get, like, an eagle skull from that? Are all of you okay? Holy cow! Oh my gosh, who was it who got nabbed? I wish I could see my baby's names. I need to, I need to memorize their names again. Wow. And what do you think you're doing? Oh jeez, I just killed a fox. But it felt like the fox, oh, life is getting much more dangerous all of a sudden. Over here, little ones, don't waste not, want not. 
Will they eat the fox? They'll eat the fox too, but apparently Mama Lynx is just leaving them to it. Oh my gosh. So yeah, as far as being part of the ecosystems go, and as far as being part of that, that cycle, it's not just about the lynxes and the rabbits. Clearly there are other predators at work. And everyone presses against one another for their own needs. And that exchange of energy is what ends up making an ecosystem. And what makes a healthy or an unhealthy healthy ecosystem is just how much energy is lost in those exchanges or removed from the environment entirely. And there's always a bit of a debate about what is a healthy ecosystem. Admire this rock, little ones, while my heart stops pounding. One, two, three, four still. Thank goodness. But there's always a bit of a debate about like what counts as a healthy ecosystem, but I think that resiliency and biodiversity are definitely a couple factors that we could look into to consider what makes a forest healthy. That's something we should all ask ourselves. What makes you think a forest is healthy? How many creatures need to be present? What does it look like? Maybe before we get into the science of what makes a forest healthy and, oh, is it autumn now? I wonder if it's autumn now because of the shifting seasons. Oh my. All right, come along, my little ones. We're going to try to figure out where to go from here. And what kind of food I can bring with us. Oh, 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 wait, I think there's some food over here. Oh, little mole. All right. Mom's got to eat something, too. You guys just had a whole fox to eat. Aha! And there's a bunny. I wonder if their fur possibly changes to get ready for winter. I think I see winter coming in with the shifting of the seasons. And I see several rocks over here. So we'll guide our little ones here to maybe teach them a bit about cliffs. I wonder if I need to help them get high up cliffs for their own safety. Come on. Come on. I need that bunny. Got it. All right, who's the smallest and slowest over here, eh? That's enough for two of you. And then there's another bunny frantic over there, but I don't know if we can sneak up on that one. Oh, and then M, huh? M? Oh, for a map so we could see where we can go. All right, all right. I wonder if the different shelters we need to reach are the different spots, so maybe we should keep going this direction and following this path after all. All right, I definitely have one itty bitty little one who's getting smaller, and that concerns me. And we need to come back around because there were several stones that I wanted to investigate with my babies. Right over here. Come along, little ones. We've got one there, and then around the corner, I saw another one right here. Let's go ahead and nudge this with our nose and see what it is, huh? There we go. Oh, I can't believe we survived those predators popping down. But yes, as I was saying, I because I study biology formally, and because I really Oh, mushrooms, look how cute. Because I really love this world and want to find out ways that we can help to take care of it and to help it thrive and to really appreciate the, the beauty of life that we have now, I try to think quite often, what makes a healthy forest? And usually I'll default to answering with scientific terms, but Today, I'm really thinking maybe the question of what makes a forest healthy should be something we ask ourselves on kind of a poetic, emotional level first. Do you think we have an instinct to be able to look out on a natural place and to know, ah, this is a healthy place or this is not a healthy place from a holistic point of view? Not just healthy for humans, but healthy for the sake of itself. Or do you think, oh, where are we going now? I'm not so sure about this. Oh boy. Or do you think that's a question? Oh, 
I think we're here in autumn? Oh my. I have no idea where we are, but maybe we should head towards that tree. <laughs> or do you think that that is a question that is too hard, that you have to be properly educated for? I know. Come along, little ones. I think we should go towards this tree now, because mysterious things are happening. The seasons are changing. And I do need to find you guys some food. So let's head this way. Oh. Okay. Where are we traveling, Ibidis? That is a good question. Huh. All right. Or maybe we need to, oh, maybe we need to learn and be taught and be educated about our world before we can really figure out what we know, if we know something is healthy or not. Because if you don't know what a forest should look like, maybe just a few stray trees that have lost all their underbrush that is in a forest that's silent of birds. Maybe we wouldn't know that that's an unhealthy forest, so I don't know. What, what do our hearts say is a healthy, natural place? Lightning. And then what should we learn and teach ourselves? Those are just my thoughts as I try to think what kind of world would these little lynxes grow up best in? Aha! Little snack. Which one of you looks hungriest? I think the little brown one again. There we go. And then it looks like there's another shiny stick over here. Hiding under this bush. But alright, I need to figure out if we need to guide our babies to some sort of shelter. Alright, hang on, hang on. There's a rabbit right over here. That's actually multicolored. Maybe because it's changing for the seasons. Please, please, please. I need this bunny. It's leading us into a whole new area. Eep! Got it. Oh, jeez. And then I need to figure out if I'm guiding our babies to a dangerous spot or not. And we have mushrooms to find! <gasps> Alright, we've got to teach these little lynxes about a new part of the world. Heck! And we need to start exploring the forest. So, thank you guys so much for joining me. If you could, do please leave a like for Mama Lynx doing her best to guide her babies right now. And if you would like to join us on this and literally thousands more adventures, do please consider subscribing. But most importantly, my friends, stay curious. I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.